All right, so this is how to get your WinWing Top Gun MIP screens from this to this. Usable. And that makes all the difference in the world, being able to see all these little buttons, because if you look at all this stuff, try to go to our SA page and those type of things, the map down here, um, they look great on the screen up here. Uh, but down here, they look fantastic now, but this is what they look like before. They were pretty much, even in dark room, unreadable. So you would have to be staring up here and you'd be using the buttons. Now, I can come to the aircraft cockpit and then actually just turn up these console lights and all that stuff, but then you can see how really dim everything is in comparison to how all that stuff is. But as soon as I hit this hotkey, now it looks just like it is in the airplane. Um, so it is totally usable. Uh, this was a really, really cool um, thing to do. It's not something Win Wing's fault. Uh, it's just the issue with DCS, how it's not displaying uh, high definition range. And so you have to use um, a remask or reshade uh, and then a UI mask uh, to take the DDI screens uh, from DCS and then basically mask them and then uh, be able to manipulate them from that. So here's the FLIR pod on, and you can see how clear all the pictures are compared to this one and the one on the actual screen. Again, this is what it looked like before. Completely unusable. You would never be able to find targets on that. So you see like TV, um, and then you can change to IR and white hot, and they just, they, they're completely gone. But as soon as you apply the mask, boom. You can see everything right on the screen, zooming right out. So very, very, very useful. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how to set that up now. Um, I was just really, really disappointed when I first got into this thing. All this stuff looked great. Um, buttons worked great. It was very, very useful. But at the same point in time, if you couldn't uh, set up this type of stuff, it really, and these, everything else was really difficult to see, really was not useful. So uh, anyways, we'll get back into it. I'll show you how to actually set it up. When we go to options, you can see this is kind of jacked up on the side here. Uh, it's split, and the reason it's split is because of these guys. Um, so I haven't figured out how to get that over there, but I think it's also because of the way. So this little guy is something that I have to have on my screen on the center, otherwise I won't get my map. See that little pink dot right there? Um, if I don't have that, um, then it doesn't work. So I've got to have that on the map screen. Uh, but anyways, the system is set right now to one screen, but the setting is 11,520 by 3184. That's the uh, resolution that I'm using. So it's basically, it's not three screens, because the three screens give it kind of like a bubble effect. Uh, I don't know what that would be useful for, but I have to do it this way to where it's just one screen and it just you know wraps around from these other screens. Uh, but what we need to do specifically is take a screenshot um, and you know, as I show on the pictures, the two buttons, which are the start, which this will work for Mac and for PC, but the start or option button, um, which would be just the start for this. I don't have, and I'll show you real quick, this button. This is, I guess, the print screen or something like that, but this actually is a button for camera. Now, by itself, it doesn't do anything, but if I hold the start and then hit that, maybe I have to hold it. There you go. So that basically gave me a bar and it told me where it was going to be saved. So it's in my screenshots in the DCS folder. Okay, so once you've taken your screenshot, if you notice that when I mouse over this, is you're going to see that the screenshot size is actually uh, 11,520 uh, by 3184. So that's basically my screen resolution size um, basically stretched over all three of those screens. So the 375-inch displays, and I'll show you the... Um, the display setting. So each one of these are essentially set to 3840 by 2160. So that's why that number never changed. But this one right here, times three, you get that 11,000 number. Um, so that's how that's set up. But if you notice right here, these are the display settings for the actual um, DDIs and AM uh, P uh, CD. So that's that's that right there. Uh, but what we're going to do is going to go and close that down before we actually go 
crazy with this. We do need to make sure that your, um, if you have the Topcom MIP and you're going to be using this, you need to make sure that it's set up. And we're going to go in here and we'll bring it over here. And I apologize, everything is really blown up, and that's because I'm having to zoom in because this is a giant screen. And if I didn't zoom in, the text on the screen would be absolutely tiny, 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 too, way too hard to read. So I have to do a couple of different things. But each one of these aircraft you can actually set up for your DDIs. You need to make sure that the orientation is correct. So when you do the scale and layout, this is the it, it displays it as 11, 13, and 12, even though we go over to the display settings. 11, 13, and 12 is 4, 6, and 5. So that's your particular DDIs have to be set to portrait mode. So if you select them down here, they need to be they're going to be running at 7, 6, 8 by 1024, and you need to set them in portrait mode. Make sure that if you do that every single time, uh, you do uh, keep changes and go ahead and set them all up. So you will have to kind of screw around with this because the screen itself does not mean that is actually the DDI uh, where the buttons are. So those have to be coordinated with the actual screen, and it takes a little futz in to get around. That's why it's 465 instead of 456, but it's just how you have your USB cables hooked up and, and and messing around with that. So anyways, um, going back over here, you're going to just go to apply. Once you've got that set, this should turn out to be green. And then when you click on set MFD display, uh, you're basically going to uh, check these. Now, if these are wrong, you'll notice that when you click on them, you can't move them. You'd have to select nothing. Okay. And then you'd have to reselect it as an option. So if you had to reorder these, that's where I had a problem and, and there was no instructions online on how to do that. I could not get this display to be over here where it was 11, 12, 13. I had it 11, 12, 13 and everything was backwards. Um, so the uh, AMPC or yeah, the AMPCD was over here and the DDI, right DDI was over here and it was a real pain to figure out. So if you ever had to switch that, make sure you do the blank, which doesn't look like an option. Um, and then you will be able to come over here, and if you needed to check that to 12, you could do that, um, or 13, then you can come over here and do 12. But they have to be basically unselected first, and then you can hit apply. So once you do that, then that'll turn green, then you can launch uh, DCS, and then these screens will be where they need to be. Uh, that's important, so you can also look at this. This right here is the screenshot of all of them out there. So if you're only using one center screen and then these three, uh, yours is going to be cropped basically to this kind of 4 by 3 or 16 by 9 type shape of whatever your resolution is going to be. Uh, it's fairly easy to deal with this. Um, you don't have to be super accurate. Uh, it's pretty easy. This is at 20% so you can see how much more extra screen space I have. But we'll go ahead and close that out. Let me just go ahead and drag and drop uh, the picture, the screenshot. So I'll just go ahead and drag and drop on this. There it is. All right, so you can see it looks like the normal size screen, but we've got to zoom way, way out to be able to see that. So we'll go ahead to view. We'll go to uh, zoom. I got to go to one by eight because that's how far I have to see it. Okay, so what we did before is basically if you take the paintbrush tool set to black, you can pretty much just erase this and everything else is already black. And then if you go over to the um, so what we need to do is we actually need to go some kind of a crop tool. You guys probably know how to do this a lot faster than I do. I don't really do a lot of Photoshop editing anymore. Uh, but I'm just going to use the selection tool. Get as close to the top right corner as their top left corner. Go all the way across here and then get it right to that area. And boom. Okay, so now that's in there, I'm going to go back to my fill tool. Anyways, guys, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. Oh, that was easy. All right, so I just filled it in. So anyways, that's all you need to do. Um, it needs to just look like a black uh, bar at the bottom and a white bar at the top, and that's it. That's really all you need to do. From here, what you're going to do is you're going to go to File. You're not going to do Save. Okay, You're going to do Export As. All right. When you do Export As, if you're using GIMP, you're going to want to do Select File Type by Extension. So when you do that, you'll be able to scroll down to PNG, all right, and it'll already give you the, the, the default, and then you just type in, and make sure you keep it uppercase, U, oops, up here, of course, make sure you're selecting the text, U, I, 
uppercase M and lowercase ASK. And that's it. Now where you want to save this, you can save this wherever you want it, but I can't even find desktop, which is ridiculous, right over here. Okay, let me just go ahead and put that on there. Export. And in, I chose to do compression level zero because I just didn't know if it was going to make any difference, but I doubt it's going to make a difference because it's just simply black and white. But I'm just going to do exports. And there you go. So now we should have on our desktop, go ahead and close this out, this guy. Open that up, and that's it. That's all it looks like. Very, very simple. And again, we'll just mouse over it. Okay, yeah, there it goes. So it shows us exactly how big it is. Now, that's 140 megabytes, which is ridiculous. We could probably compress that, and it really wouldn't be a big deal. But that's I think that's massive for that thing, just because there's no compression. Anyways, uh, let's move on and show you exactly what we need to do with the folders and the locations of where these things actually need to be. Um, so we've got a couple of different locations. If you saved your screenshot, um, your screenshot would have been most likely in your, uh, to find that screenshot, is in your save games, DCS open beta or DCS whatever it is, and screenshots. That's where you would have extracted that one particular file to put into GIMP or Photoshop or whatever thing you're going to edit with. Um, the UI mask, uh, once you've saved it, you can save it in that same folder. It does need to go into a totally different folder. So what we're going to do is go into the installation folder for the game directory. This is not your save games directory. So it's got to be in Eagle Dynamics. And it's going to be an open beta for me. Could be in for you. This is going to be where the um, in the bin folder and then reshade shaders. So after you've installed reshade, this is where it's actually going to be looking for all these folders. So then you go into your textures folder. And so the entire length of that is going to be, let me go back here. So it's the E for me, Eagle Dynamics, if it was C for your C drive, whatever. Eagle Dynamics, DCS, Open Beta, okay, the bin folder, the reshade shaders folder, textures folder, and then you will drop that Unimask and make sure that it was set to the PNG file. So that's it. Once you've done that, then what we got to do is we've got to open up DCS world. All right, so this has already been edited, so I can turn that off, and you can see how dim it goes in comparison. It's a big difference. Um, you don't see anything happening here. Let's see. You don't see anything happening when I turn on the reshade. That goes up there, but you don't see any change happening between those two. All right, so once you're opening up Reshade, go ahead and go to the home key, and that will bring up the Reshade. All right, so this is how it has to be set up. Um, once you've got this here, you're going to want to set up and check these four boxes right here. It's going to be Unimask top, and then it's going to be Tone Map, then Levels, and then UI mask bottom. Now this is important. These will not necessarily be in this order. Like for example, tone map could be up here and see what happens when I move that. They have to be in a very specific order. Otherwise it's going to basically uh, put that mask of white over everything that we've got here. So that's why we need to put this underneath the original uh, tone map. Now if I put that tone map underneath levels, then the DDIs and all the other screens would not work on the actual screens that I want to manipulate uh, for the black. So these right here uh, have to be in this order. So again, UI mask top, tone map, levels, UI mask bottom. Okay. Once you select them, you can go to the tone map and you can go to, um, let's see here, under the bottom here, we can just scroll up and down. And these settings are kind of going to be up to you. Um, a good, the, I think it was set to 16 and this was 150. And then this number right here was set to 0500 or 0. 0.0, uh, 0.500. That's what that was actually set at. And you can just kind of manipulate it a little bit, but it won't affect the screens here. It'll only affect your actual screens on the MIP. Uh, so just take that in consideration. You can kind of tweak it, but while you're doing that, um, you can just turn it on and off with your hotkey. If you don't know how to use your hotkey inside of here, there's that video. Uh, you know, I'll 
post a link right here of how to install this and do all that. But it's pretty simple. You just go up to your settings and you will see it says uh, effect toggle on and off. So if you do the overlay key, I have the home button, which basically when I hit home, the whole thing goes away. It doesn't affect any of the other settings, but if I use the number pad slash, that's when I can turn on and off the effect for my DDIs. And again, you're not seeing it on this screen. You're, you would be seeing it on the others. Um, so you can change these numbers to whatever you want. Uh, just keep in mind that they're going to be overriding certain things or even doubling the effects. Uh, so if you have that numbers key, for example, zoom on uh, inside your cockpit, every time you turn it on and off, your zoom is going to zoom in uh, on, on that. Can, that can be pretty annoying. So you got to turn that off inside your DCS just like that. Well, I hope this has been uh, helpful. Um, it's really nice that I have this whole system working now uh, because I was really bummed out the fact that I spent all this money to get this thing air and set up and rig it up and connect it and troubleshoot it and all that kind of stuff just for it to be too dim to be able to use. So now that it's not a problem, I can get back to flying, have a good time. Um, but uh, credit goes out to uh, Ali for helping me out with this and sending me the link to the guide. Uh, I'll post all the links for all of the uh, descriptions for the original guides that I was using, but this is pretty much a step-by-step -step of what I had to do to get it done. So hopefully that was good for you, and uh, we'll see you in the skies. Idiot out.